my previous life was racing boats around the world. When you race around the world non-stop on your own, you take with you everything that you need for your survival. And you manage that down to the last drop of diesel for the generator and the last packet of food. And it really taught me what finite meant. You're at sea for three months. You're two and a half thousand miles away from the nearest town. Finite was real. And then I translated that to the global economy. And suddenly, I realized our global economy is no different. It is powered by resources we only have once in the history of humanity. And yet we're using them in a very linear fashion. A linear economy is an economy where we take something out of the ground, we make something out of it, and then we throw it away. And yes, we, we are able to cycle some of the materials, but not by design. It's more of a, what can we get out at the end? Within a circular economy, by intention, when that product, that material, that it could be a banana, it could be a train, when it enters the economy, there is a defined path for the flow of the materials within that product. So it could be the, the nutritional uh, value of the banana turning into human uh, waste, turning into fertilizer, going back to the farms, or it could be a train designed for remanufacture, disassembly, decomponentization, and then ultimately the end of its life when the components can no longer be used, the materials themselves feeding back into the economy to make the next train or washing machine. Obviously, we need food and animals need food to survive, and that means that we have to grow food or find food. And that food needs nutrient to be grown, or to be it an animal or be it a plant. And those nutrients are fundamental to our survival. When we look at life itself, which has existed for billions of years, we've always been able to cycle the nutrients. You know, dead people, dead animals go into the soil, dead uh, plants go into the soil, and the nutrient cycle is maintained. Within our developed world, we've broken that cycle. Human waste, uh, food production waste, food waste does not go back to the farms in most cases. It ends up leaking out of the system. It ends up mixed up with other materials. It maybe covers a landfill site, but it doesn't go back to the farm as that valuable nutrient it has done for billions of years. So the food system, in a way, is broken. Less so, actually, in many developed nations. Not entirely, but they're more connected to that circular system. So within a circular economy context, what if we could collect human waste, food waste, food production waste, and also agricultural waste? What if we could feed that back into the economy? And actually, one of the steps we made on the foundation's journey was to ask McKinsey that question. They're our knowledge partner. And we said, what if you could collect this? Could we, could we possibly replace a high percentage of current chemical fertilizer use, expecting it to be impossible? But the answer was yes, we could by 2.7 times. So there's massive potential in a circular economy to recover these materials, these nutrients, and feed them back into the biological system and the food system. It's more economically beneficial to switch to circular models rather than the linear that they're currently functioning. So economically, there's a very big driver. But I think one of the biggest barriers to circularity is the thinking. You know, we've been through our education system as individuals in a very linear fashion. We learn about the Industrial Revolution. We learn about lean manufacturing. We learn about this is how we do things. And actually, the circular economy involves a different mindset. It's not uh, faster, cheaper, more profit. It's actually how do we redefine the system so people get a better product for less money. The product goes back into the manufacturer. They can recover the materials who make more money because the materials feed back into a system. It's a systemic change. It's marketing, finance, design. It's everything. And that involves a, a reboot of the way we see the economy and actually that's one of the biggest hurdles is is enabling people to, to have that reboot to see that reboot and then to start to put in place the necessary uh, stages. Mm -hmm.